Hey guys, finally today I'm filming the video about my upcoming breast reduction. It is in six days. I did say that I was going to film this about a month or so ago, but I realized that I had a pre-op um, appointment coming up just last week and I thought that it would be better to save the video until after that so that I could have more information and more accurate information to share in the video. So this broken is going to be broken up in this broken is going to be broken. Is that what I just? This video is going to be broken up into a few sections, and before you really get into it, I'm going to tell you now that there will be sensitive topics, including triggering content that I'll be mentioning in the video. There will be mention of body image, dysmorphia, weight fluctuations, sexual abuse, and surgical procedures. So to make sure this is a safe video for everyone, I will. Um, put timestamps and warnings in the bottom so if there's a section that you possibly want to skip because it's going to be sensitive information for you or something like that um, you'll be able to navigate through the video safely. So the first question that um, I'm going to answer is just uh, what am I getting done? Um, I'm getting a breast reduction. It's a surgical operation aimed at removing excess breast fat, glandular tissue and skin to achieve a breast size in proportion with your body and to alleviate discomfort associated with excessively large breasts such as neck pain and back pain. The procedure typically includes a breast lift and a reduction in in like your um, nipple size um, and a reduction in breast volume to create overall more you know proportionate and youthful uh, breast contour. Am I reducing or removing? I am reducing. Um, while I do think it would be incredibly liberating to get rid of them absolutely entirely, um, I do find that since I am a gender fluid individual I still find myself residing um, in sort of like a femme basis of existence, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm reducing. I am an E slash F cup right now, so I'm hoping that I can go down to about a C. It's uh, smaller than when my breasts were when I first developed, so um, it's going to be something that I've um, never done before. Do you <laughs> do you get to keep them? No, but any time uh, tissue is medically removed from somebody, it's sent off to be tested for issues and signs of any infection and other problems. So, so I guess someone gets to keep it at least for a little while. <laughs> Was it hard to organise? No. Um, I've organised this twice. I've had two different surgeons. Um, for this go around, I went to a GP, not like a regular one or anything, just walked in, had a walk-in appointment and said, I want a breast reduction. Do you have a preferred plastic surgeon that I could see? They said no. Um, at least this particular one did. I, they said no. And they told me to come back when I had a surgeon or a practice in mind that I could get a referral to. I joined a Facebook group about breast reductions in Australia, um, found surgeons people highly praised and took their name um, to my GP for a referral. I booked an appointment and went driving to Turak and I met with Kim Taylor, um, who was incredible from like the second I walked in, like straight up. Um, it was really good. She sat down with me and we talked about my experiences, my hatred for my, you know, excessively dense breast tissue and she gave me a full examination. We measured everything, explained the surgical procedure and because um, I was, you know, pretty much like already mentally ready to go at that stage we went and took some before photos um because they're going to compare them obviously to the post-surgery which will happen later on um i sat down with some other staff members and they took me over the costs um uh how it could be claimed through private health insurance and the expectations i could have for surgery and how they'd care for me and how i could serve you know um uh care for myself after the surgery i went home um not even on the, not even before I got to home on the way to my car after the sur after the um, appointment, I called my mother and within a few days we had booked and locked in a date. Okay, so this is the big one. Um, obviously, it is a medical procedure. It is going to cost a lot of money. So the questions that I got for this little section are: How much does it cost? How are you paying? What are the health insurance options? So there's three separate bills that you need to pay for this kind of thing. You need to pay the hospital for your hospital stay if you need to stay overnight. You need to pay the surgeon who will obviously be doing the procedure and you need to pay the anaesthetist. The surgical fee I will be paying to the plastic surgeon, which can depend comparing to your doctor and things like that, is $12,000. 
uh, to secure my surgery date, I put down a deposit of $2,000. You get a separate bill for your anesthesiologist slash anesthetist, and mine is a total of $2,000 exactly. It needs to be paid exactly one day business day before my surgery happens. I have private health insurance and as my surgery is deemed medically necessary due to the um, nature of my breasts affecting me in day-to-day -day life, I'll be able to claim at least the hospital stay and get a bit of money back for my surgeon payment. If this is an issue for you due to not having pu uh, private health insurance, you can go through the public list. It is a fraction of the cost, but it takes a lot, lot longer for your turn to like slowly come up within like the list. I do not think there are payment plans for this kind of situation. Um, I was super lucky to have my mother be overwhelmingly supportive. Um, we put money into an accruing account to mature the considerable amount of money to help me pay and I investigated at the time um, the option of taking money out of my superannuation to pay for the surgery which I have seen a lot of people do. They haven't regretted it in the slightest from at least everybody that I spoke to about it but it is a very costly procedure and if it wasn't going to completely change my life the way that I'm hoping that it will I probably get it done yeah so in total not including the actual um, pre-op and other appointments that I've had with Kim Taylor it's going to be about 17,000 Australian dollars what is the recovery time like if all goes well I'm looking at about two weeks um, where I can get up and walk around and possibly even go to work and things like that. However, there are obviously issues which can extend from healing time, like infection, tearing stitches, personal healing time, and heaps of other factors and things like that. I have a very hands-on lifting job, therefore I will not be able to do that pretty much when I go back to work. I will be able to you know, stand at the counter and serve people and things like that. Depending how I awaken from anesthesia and how I respond to anesthesia, it could affect whether I stay any extra nights at the hospital. Um, at this stage I'm booked for one night, which is just immediately after surgery, sleep the night and then I get to go tomorrow just to make sure you know everything's fine. But obviously those kind of things can affect what your recovery time is going to be like as well. So if things are all good and clear, it is two to three weeks of resting to gently easing back into work and walking pretty much, no strenuous exercise. And then from weeks four to six to eight is where you can start expect to go back to like your regular programming of life. So hopefully I'll be able to start going to the gym, um, start lifting at work and all those kind of things. And that's, you know, what I'm expecting time wise there. Are you scared? I'm scared that it's not going to happen from <laughs> that obviously comes from the previous attempts I've had to try and get the surgery um, and get into the <laughs> operating room. Um, every time I've booked it in the past some absolutely life-changing horrible event has happened before I get there therefore I've had to you know postpone or even think about giving it up. Um, there are parts of the surgical procedure which don't scare me but I'm obviously very mindful of. Um, one of them is nipple depth which is kind of um, one of the biggest um, issues which can happen through this kind of surgery which you know if it's right there in the title it just means that your nipples never regain any kind of nerve um, sensitivity and things like that or they can kind of like rot technically from like infection and things and therefore you just get them completely removed um it's not something that i fear but it's something that can happen um the in actuality the biggest thing i'm frightened for in this journey is that after i have the surgery i will continue to feel the same hatred for my body and suffer from the same dysmorphia that i've had for my entire life um, I don't want to go through this. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <sighs> I don't want to go through this painful, expensive, and um, long recovery 
undertaking just to find myself that I feel as disgusted as I do when I look at myself every day already. Um, the biggest saving grace for me there is that I've been to the gym a lot recently and actively and I feel good about going there. Um, and even though I can't physically see the changes in my body because my fucking boobs are in the way, um, I am really hoping that afterwards I will be able to see the changes and I'll be able to see the body that I you know, have always had but you haven't been able to really see because of everything. <laughs> will you miss them? No, I will not. I do not have any positive emotions when it comes to my breasts. I found them nothing but be a fucking nightmare in all aspects of my life since I was 12 years old. Um, and um, while this is the biggest question that people keep asking me, um, why would you want to get a reduction? Aren't I going to regret not having huge boobs? Um, don't say this shit to people. <laughs> it is so fucking rude and invasive you do not know what people have gone through with their kind of things like this like it's their image of themselves it's not your you know seeing things from the outside not experiencing it just don't anyway <clears throat> moving on um so i got a lot of uh different like sections of questions for um the why i am getting a breast reduction um it's going to be broken into three sections um, it's going to be the medical version, it's going to be the self-image and aversions, and then it's going to be history and things like that. Um, so we're going to start off with the medical, medically deemed reasons that I am getting a breast reduction. Um, and yeah, so here we go. They're heavy, like really heavy, and it's not relieved by anything. It's there and it's pulling constantly. Um, if they're not being pulled down just by gravity, um, then they're being held by a bra and guess where the weight is then transferred to this part of my right here and this part pushes on these muscles which give me insane migraines shoulder pain neck pain um i have a shoulder injury and because of where my bra straps push in it's constantly pushing my shoulder out of socket um which is you know stopping my shoulder from fully recovering from its first injury i have breathing issues permanent scars from bright from bras i have constant pain not only from my boobs but my neck my back my shoulders and more it is insanely common for people with large breasts to have issues with their vertebrae in their neck and upper back from the constant weight of tissue um for a long time i was getting nerve blockers in uh, literally needled into the nerves in the back of my head to stop myself having migraines and really bad headaches and they're annoying <laughs> they're in the way <laughs> Section two is um, why the self-image and aversions. This is about dysmorphia. This is one of those things in the video as well that I do not want to talk about outside of the video. I am only keeping these in here because it is important to the whole procedure and the happenings and things like that. So that is why those are in here. The biggest visual reason for me to get a breast reduction is sagging. Since I first developed, um, when I was 12, they've nothing, nothing except be growing and because of that they pulled downwards. Um, when I did my first measurements with my surgeon, from the centre of my chest to my nipple, it is 30 centimetres away. Um, and the biggest reason for me is that because of how low they hang and then where they go out at the bottom, they cover up my waistline. Um, it's a huge hang up for me because I've struggled, as I've said, a lot with body dysmorphia throughout my life and that is the complete opposite of help when you cannot see that you have a small tiny waist. I struggle feeling comfortable in a lot of clothing. If I get something that will actively accentuate my waistline, it's too small for my boobs, it gapes or it stretches, um, which brings attention to them. Um, singlets and other clothing items do not hide ugly straps, which unfortunately most bigger bras are. Um, and because of the sagging and weight pulling down from my chest, I have these little flaps of um, excess you know, skin and things which come in here and they bulge over my bra or the actual straps of my, bar, of my bra bulge as well. And so if I do wear a tight fitting top or anything like that, that is like fully accentuated to me and I cannot take my eyes off of it. So 
obviously I have a lot of <laughs> body um, issues when it comes to that um, so that is one of the reasons that this surgery will be good for me hopefully abuse and other things of stupid bullshittery before I can begin this part of the video I'm saying that I'm only talking about these things again because they are relevant to my story here do not ask me about them otherwise I do not want to talk about it. As I've mentioned, I developed quickly and really suddenly at 12. I just pretty much skipped any other breast development things and went straight to a D cup. From 12 years old, I was wearing my mother's bras because that's those were the ones that fit me. Um, as you can guess, that is the beginning of where a lot of these issues kind of started. Um, as you can probably already gather, I became an object of fascination and learning um, and experiences for others in my age group. I was asked to uh, let people touch me or if I could flash them and heaps of other absolutely gross stuff which is shrugged off for being normal curiosity of teenagers going through like sexual awakenings. From there they've always been an eyesore for me and there has been this um, continuous experiences throughout my life of groping, touching, unsolicited comments and all the other fucking bullshit that you can probably imagine. This is probably the biggest thing that affects me not having any positive kind of um, thoughts and like a positive relationship with you know this part of my body. So as not to end on a shitty note I've got a really fantastic question that we can end with um, and someone asked me what are you most excited for post-surgery? Um, running. <laughs> One of the goals I have 2024 uh, this year is that I want a, mar a marathon um, and I'm super excited just to be able to train for it, um, to go outside and be let loose in a field like a released animal. I'm super excited to be able to train and to be wearing a bra without my ribs being suffocated or being hit in the face by my boobs as I run. Um, and yeah, so running is absolutely the peak thing that I am looking forward to. Um, other than that, obviously, I'm looking forward to wearing clothes which are, you know, going to fit the rest of my body. Um, I'm looking forward to <laughs> being able to tie my shoes without having to physically move my boob out of the way or suffocating myself. Oh, when you get out of the shower and you flip your hair down to wrap it up in a towel, if I do that currently, my boobs swing up and hit me in the face. And while it does make a hilarious echoing noise in the bathroom, it's not a, <laughs> it's not a fun sensation. <laughs> As I mentioned before, I'm very excited about seeing my waist. Um, and something which is very um, specific for me at least, I'm looking forward to being able to do um, more mask cosplays. Um, both uh, mentally comfortably and physically without such extreme binding. That is all of the questions that I got. Um, I'm sorry that this kind of turned into like a full video essay kind of thing about the processes and whatnot, um, but I feel like that's been important for people who either just wanted to follow the journey out of curiosity or are possibly thinking about doing this kind of thing for themselves. Um, I am planning on making another video about the um, days leading up to surgery, the surgery day, and hopefully when I wake up or at least a couple of days afterwards. Um, so if you're curious to see how recovery goes or experiences or things I've learned while you know going through that kind of um, period, you can definitely stay tuned to see that video. Thank you to everybody who has uh, sp supported me on coffee um, throughout the year to help me pay for this, as well as everybody who's just been outrageously supportive and kind for the process in general. Thank you to Tony for being a great PT and incredibly supportive individual for um, my journey just to get to here. Um, his links are in the bio if you need an absolutely delightful human with unending buckets of support and hype, consider looking into his training. Super special thank you to Sam who is putting her life on hold um, for X amount of time. Oh my god, I'm crying again. Yeah, literally putting her life on hold to come and take me to the hospital, to stay with me afterwards and um, babysit me through what I'm expecting is going to be a mini with T-Rex arms. <laughs> kind of situation. Yeah, if you have questions or anything like that about the actual uh, surgical procedures and things like that, feel free to shoot me a message. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Oh, it's not called Twitter anymore, is it? What's it called? Oh, X, formerly known as Twitter. What is it, Prince? Madonna? 
share. Come on. <sighs> Done. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and I'll see you on the other side.